Hey, I'm Tony Roach, joined with my good friends Joel Nelson and Steve Hansen from Markham Technologies. I know us three couldn't be more excited about the new MX-7 from Markham. It's a digital unit that is truly a beast. I, when it comes to ice fishing excitement, I am pumped. I cannot wait to get back out on the ice with this, this thing. Joel and I had an opportunity to test it a little bit last year, but we wanted to bring Steve Hansen in here to really dial this in and answer any questions that we may have or any other ice anglers may have about the new unit. That's what's fun about ice, right? Yeah. All this excitement that happens every year, we, uh, we get so jazzed up about it and uh, it's really what's unique and fun is that I don't think there's an excitement like this that in our sport, whether that's fishing in general, that kind of gets everybody as jazzed up about ice. And, and we're three guys that, you know, we've been doing this for a little while now, right? Yep. And uh, we've seen a lot of new things and we're, we're really excited about this. I know you guys are too. So and any, anytime you got something new like this, though, there's going to be questions, right, Steve? I mean, people yeah. want to know what this thing's all about. And I've got questions. I'm sure Tony has questions too. So I we have you here to help us answer those questions. And so, like Tony said, we had a chance to play with these a little bit, but... I look on the screen right now, I've got a flasher display, I've got a map, it looks a little bit like the LX-7, maybe with some mapping, is, is that accurate? You're a very smart guy, Joel, wow. absolutely. Just first look, right, <laughs> first look. No, you're, you're right, yeah, we've got, a, we've got a, a sonar GPS system in the MX, and we know that this is something that the market's been looking for from Markham, and we wanted to make sure to do it you know, our way, and what that means is, you know, we're, we're ice fishing through and through. And the way that these things work is just, they drive different than what an open water system does. And there's a lot of great attributes that kind of flow through all of them. But, you know, with, uh, with the MX in particular, there's just things about it. There's nuances that the unit does that are really specific to ice that we're really good at. And, uh, and that's okay to say, I think. We, uh, we kind of paved the way with the LX. You know, a few years ago, you guys were a big part of that. Um, the real-time aspects of what kind of, Markham broke through back in those early days with making the, the digital thing really something that became a mainstay. And we're just bringing a lot of that good, great stuff into a system that certainly looks different than the LX-7. Mm -hmm. It's got all these, these new um, attributes that this has, but it also carries a lot of the ones that we've really been known for over the years. And the big one is it works, acts, and behaves like an ice fishing system. And those are the things that we really brought into this. And I think that's really important because I get asked all the time when it comes to digital units, you know, why Markham? And exactly what you just said there right there, because it's an ice fishing unit. What are the top three things that you could name out of that that would make me a better angler if I bought this unit versus someone else's? Well, I think the, the big reasons for that is that there's a bunch of things. And when we're, you know, look at us, you know, we're in a wheelhouse, right? Yeah. And there's lots of sonar oftentimes that, you know, that interact with each, you know, with each other inside of a, a, of a situation like this or on the ice. And we know that the, that the frequency that these operate at are ultim is the, really the ultimate for freshwater angling. And so we're dedicated to that 200 kilohertz frequency. Mm. It, it's a big deal as it relates to the things that we do. There's a little bit of the magic that happens inside of that. Where I'm going with this is interference rejection. Yeah. You know, we know how important it is. And it's, it's a patented feature that you know, the guys in the early days with Markham really uh, brought into this because it's so important. You, know, you want to get everybody fishing to a level where they're comfortable and you know, the, the ability to tune out those those false signals or crosstalk, which which yeah. happens when you see that. You know, it's like a it's like the old two way radios. You know, we're not in that in that world anymore, but <laughs> if you were on the same channel as somebody else, you could hear them talking, you change the channel. You need to be able to do that effectively mm -hmm. in order for everybody to have the, the conversation that you need to have with in this case it's the system, it's the jig, it's yeah. the it's the cadence, it's all the things that you want to see and, and doing that in, in real time which is really the key barrier that was broken through. And I think we want to make sure to remind people about that. It's so important to be able to see those things happen the way that they're supposed to in an ice fishing situation. And then doing that in a manner that really caters to how we do it, which is maximizing display space. And we know the importance of the whole target separation thing and, sure. and certainly making sure people are educated on that is nobody does a better job of you know, seeing if this is the bottom of the lake and, and the fish's belly to the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, those are the little things that separate one machine from the next is the ability to detect and see those things. And that's a big deal as it relates to how we do and what we do different. There's nobody better at, at target separation than we are because of, of some of the magic that happens with this. We say that word, but there are definitely some proprietary things that go into making right. these systems really unique to the ice angler. 
So IR is one, target separation, you know, head and shoulders is a huge one. Mm -hmm. It's the reason that in the early years, and there's a lot of great systems out there, mm -hmm. there are, yeah. but, but in the early years, you had to prove to somebody that this was a better option yeah. than something else that sure. either came before it or was next to it. And you can see a fish on a display and you can't on another one, mm -hmm. that's an eye opener. <laughs> so, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's oh, the yeah. difference between, you know, catching a perch, you, you know, we talked about cameras too, either seeing a fish on the screen whether it's with your own eyes on a camera or you're able to detect those really minute differences on something like this and those features ring through and probably the other one that's a couple of them probably another one that we did which is still unique to Markham is that dynamic range yeah. and I think there's still a lot of education that happens with that and you're not going to use that in open water you're just not you're going to use auto range because right. you're you're seeing you know the the contours of, of what the bottom looks like you're we've got so much so many great tools now that you're, you're, but you're looking for those changes in, you know, you know what, what does that look like in the mind's eye? When you're driving across the lake, you want to see a brake line yeah. coming up. Sure. You don't want to see the flat. it always <laughs> flat, right? That's not good if you're running shallow water. <laughs> but if you're in 10 feet or you're in 110 feet with dynamic range, we want you to be able to see the display operate the exact same way. We don't want to have you cut into the display. Yeah. You know, when you're in mixed ranges with, sure. uh, with auto. Yeah. You know, so to lock into dynamic when you're running down a brake line and have everything look the same, and then to be able to even go to auto or manual dynamic where you want to lock in um, and, and not have to worry about some of those auto changes that can occur. Those are huge when you're, when you're working down a brake line, when you're set up maybe on, the, on a shelf or mm -hmm. on the edge of one or right at the base. You know, you want to lock into to manual. It's just there's some there's just so many differences with this that really make it the the ice fishing system that it is. So if I if I'm 100% comfortable like like I am with a LX7. Yep. What's the biggest differences between my LX7 and the new MX7? Well, I think uh, you know, great question. I think the main reason going to the from the four x three aspect to to a wide is the ability to to split the screen in half. You know, when sure. you're talking about split screen sure. um, with, the, with the GPS component. So Tony talked about going from an LX7 to an MX7. What if you fished a different sonar GPS combo? What are the major differences between the MX7 and some of the other ones out there? Why is it important, the feature set that's in the MX7? Well, we know that uh, like on the flasher dial in particular and just kind of having that, that cozy blanket that yeah. makes it a nice an ice fishing sure, system sure. you know giving you the ability to turn on and off those specific things mm -hmm. you know as opposed to running through um specific views yeah those are good too but i think is in terms of just putting on the screen exactly what you want where you want it mm -hmm. and having the screen reformat as opposed to having this the the quick keys or quick views are really nice but i think once we're set up ice fishing mm -hmm. it's kind of you kind of dial that in and then it's just like one or two button presses to get you back from whether it be full screen gps into whether it's a vertical, some some folks love the vertical orientation because it's it's in the mind's eye what the water column looks like, yeah, right? So right. We, we're kind of seeing an evolution a little bit away from, to a degree, away from the circular flasher dial just because you can you can do more with space, you know, with with the verticals as opposed to putting the round dial on a on the display. And that's how I so. set mine up. It's always, you know, chart and then running that vertical display. Yeah. So I've always I've always loved that top is top, bottom is bottom, you know. For some anglers that may be new to ice fishing, yeah. the dial's not always the best for them. Obviously, traditionalists love the dial. Yeah, yeah that's, so, that's But fun. being able to set it up any way you want is always what I've loved about Markham. And, and it's laser fast. As you jig, it's moving simultaneously. And I that's something I've always appreciated from Markham. Well, the, the fun thing for us about that is, you know, you have to sometimes tell yourself to remember. And, <laughs> like... We remember when we had to prove that to people. Like you could use a digital system and ice for ice fishing. Right. And now it's like, why you know why wouldn't you? Sure. And we have you know we make them all, and it's nice to be able to have you know a traditional flasher system. And we, you guys have talked about that a lot, whether it's the the threes and fives mm -hmm. and, and ones. All of those those great things about those are you know evolved and migrated into the LX and, and the MX. There's a lot of. Um, history in our sport and there's a lot of uh, um, again that like I said kind of that cozy blanket that yeah. we have with looking at the, the flasher but doing it differently and being able to do it this way allows us to keep true to what and we know that what our sport is and how electronics have become su such an important piece but kind of bringing it 
to the next level. Sure. Well, and all those aspects of ice fishing are important to the way people fish these units. You know, um, it's with, with Markham, it built right in that real time aspect. You've yeah. got interference rejections that are built for ice fishermen. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, there's so many things that go into a Markham unit that make it unique to the ice world that just a lot of others aren't doing out there. Now you add that whole GPS factor yeah. to this unit and it, it's game on. And that's Navionics, that, that's the partner that we're, that we're working with with that. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a micro SD that, that goes in here. So the, the full Navionics suite uh, of you know, sonar chart live you know, capabilities that you, that you would have. So if you, if you did happen to use this in an open water situation, for instance, and, and more and more people will. And we've been doing the, the open water dual beam deucer for a number of years. Sure. That'll, that has a temp sensor on it. So if that you know wants to happen, you know, if somebody wants to put that in a boat or whatever, they absolutely can do that. And we're seeing you know um, the angling community use lakes that aren't mapped as well as they would to mm. use that data to right. then take out on the ice. So as far as some of those upper level GPS functions that we see um, on some of the other systems out there, those all exist in here yep. um, from that perspective. So as you're as you're working with the with the Navionics piece and you're selecting which areas you want to use. You know, those will go right in there. You have the, the history and record capabilities with the sonar charts piece. And then, of course, um, you know, you guys know the advantages of just getting onto the, the, the spot on the spot as yeah. the angling communities become 100%. more educated about what that even means. 100%. That's such a huge deal, um, having that repeatability. And I, you know, I see the uh, lithium shuttle that we know and love from a lot of the other Markham units. I see the soft pack. Uh, why, why release it in two forms? What's the, what's the advantage there? Well, I think the, the lithium shuttle for us, you know, a few years ago now really, you know, was the onset of, of the lithium technology piece coming into mm. our sport. Right. We know how, how much it's, it's been adopted now. Yeah. And so we wanted to make sure to kind of have the, the flagship product available on our best power solution. Gotcha. And the same exists for, you know, for the LX as right. well. So right. those two systems alone this year will have the shuttle. And then the soft pack, and, and there's a soft pack for this too. You know, that's one thing we got asked for for, for a couple of years was having a soft pack to, sure. to transport that in. I think it'll be more of a transport case than a um, than something you that's maybe fish out of. But, yeah. but just to throw it in the sled and you're ripping across the lake, you know, you got something. So that's been a big part of the, the lineup forever. But all of these now have uh, lithium batteries in them too. So we're giving oh, so, you. So there's lithium in both. Right. So we've got the the MX in the in the soft pack has a our brute battery in it, which is a, a 10 amp hour lithium um, cell in this. And then, so we're giving you both options, just that this obviously has the USB on it and, and the lighting, which sure. is great, and just you know, glowing jigs or whatever, finding your way and mm -hmm. packing stuff up. I couldn't be more excited about this upcoming season just because of this product. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is what we are at Markham. I'm so glad you sat down with Joel and I. I know we've, we've talked extensively on the yeah. phone and as this ice season gets closer and closer, I cannot wait to hit the ice with this unit again. I know last year we were jacked when we were out <laughs> fishing with it. Yeah. Uh, I'll say this too, keep the keep the questions coming. We, we love that. Yeah. It gives us an opportunity to, to kind of help educate and to let people know what's going on as far as um, that goes on the service side. We're, we're always willing to, to do everything that we can to get questions answered. And we know there's going to be a lot of them. We know that there's things that we may have may have missed just with what we've talked about today. So, If anglers out there have any questions, how can they get answered? I think uh, Markham Tech is still, markhamtech.com is still mm -hmm. the best way to, to go. Great staff there. Um, if there's questions that you know are, are, are something that we can help answer, however that may be, you know, we're always going to be available to to do that. But uh, the, the questions we know are going to come and, and we, want to, we want to definitely hear those. And, Help you guys make the best decision you can on whatever it might be, whether it's a, this or a camera or whatever. But uh, there's lots of questions. There always is, but it's going to be a fun, fun year this year. And that. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to ice fish uh, from Tony and myself, Steve Hansen. Thanks for helping us out, and I can't wait to ice fish. I don't know about you guys. You bet.